Hey Cloud Gamers, today we're going to have a look at Godfall on the PC across Virtual PCs, Shadow PC and Maximum Settings 2080. The Shadow PC is the boost tier here which is running the 1080 equivalent and the Maximum Settings is running a 2080 Super. In the middle we have an RTX 3080 PC just as a baseline so you can see what difference it really makes having an RTX 3080 versus one of these cloud PCs. The Shadow Boost here did struggle running on anything above medium at 1440 as all of these are running at 1440 res here. Maximum settings was able to have the ray tracing enabled on Epic with some Pretty hefty frame dips down to 30 frames per second, but as we show them all side by side here, we can see those medium settings on shadow, especially as we look around the door, we don't have as much detail and we don't have those lighting effects for ray tracing and the gold effect really makes a big difference here on the pile of gold. And as we look through the doorway, it's pretty even across the board on the long distance character drawing. It's only really when we look up close, especially on the armour as well, that we see those differences. As we show a bit of Shadow Boost here then, one of the battles, again we can see compared to the others the blurriness around the characters here. But we're still holding 50 frames per second during this fight. The effects are still very good and if you're running this at 1080 you're going to be getting a solid 60 frames per second plus. And it's more than playable, it's definitely a good game and if you're not fussed with ray tracing or you just haven't had the ability to experience it yet, Shadow Boost will fulfill those needs. Let's have a look at the high end PC here, this is an RTX 3080 running with an AMD Ryzen 9 3800X. You see we're still getting some of the frame dips, again running at 1440 with epic settings and full ray tracing. Although we see those frames per second dropping, it's barely noticeable in the actual games, they're such small dips. But we can see how much more effects there are on the explosions there and the lighting, especially on the ray tracing across the floor and the character itself. So let's see how the cloud version of maximum settings stacks up against that. We can see those ray tracing effects. And again we're getting those dips down into the 20s and 30s but they're not that noticeable. Maximum settings is only available in Canada right now or with some hefty lag across different regions. I'm accessing this from the UK with around 100 millisecond latency although it really is not that noticeable as it dials into the GPU directly using GameStream. The Moonlight Engine here rendering absolutely superbly. We come back side by side then, all of these were recorded slightly differently, obviously the RTX 3080 was recorded locally, Shadow PC using its custom client and the Maximum Settings 2080 via Moonlight. But looking across the three of them here you can see Moonlight does a fantastic job at streaming those graphics and is very close to the RTX 3080. As we come back to that shadow boost, again we can see that quality drop, but the client itself is very efficient. No input lag across the board. Shadow boost has always been very good at its input latency and quality of streaming. You can see we did get a few little bits of stutter there, even though the frame rate did not dip. In the benchmarks, Shadow PC was really struggling on a lot of these and that's why it's now running on the medium settings to hold a better frame rate. You can see the same section with the RTX 3080, we're pushing higher frames per second even with those epic settings and ray tracing on. And after looking at Shadow Boost you can really tell the difference between the quality here. It does play very well locally, but also you have local issues with heat, for example, where it really heats up the GPU. As you can see, it's pushing it to 80-90% most of the time. 
though those ray tracing effects do look extremely good. So again looking at the 2080 Super of the Cloud Gaming Rig from Maximum Settings then we see those ray tracing effects and we can see the GPU high in the 90s a lot of the time here but still getting over 60 frames per second most of the time. The setup that Maximum Settings have for this Tier 3 2080 Super really is a testament to how cloud gaming for virtual PCs can be in future. Again, as we come back side by side, especially looking at the 2080 and 3080s here, these colour effects as we have this kind of yellow mist does show extremely close together and although the difference mostly is in the percentage for the GPU being used the frames per second are quite similar between the 3080 and 2080 here. Shadow PC boost holding slightly higher frames per second but it is on those medium settings and you can see just how much more blurry that is. However, if you just want to be able to play this game and you are playing on a smaller screen, then Shadow Boost will be more than good enough. Even Shadow dipping under the 30 frames per second mark there in that bit of a battle. If you are looking to play Godfall, then you still have good options here. Let us know in the comments below whether you're going to be playing this game at all and where you are going to be playing it, if it's in the cloud or whether you do have a local rig capable of playing the game. I'll leave you with a little bit more gameplay across all three here so that you can see a bit more of the battles with some extra skills. The game is extremely fun and I can see it getting a little bit repetitive the skill tree shows so many different skills coming into play. I think by the time I was finished here I already had around 8 different skills. But you can see you've got your shield timer in the bottom left which you need to use for the shield skills. And then the two bars on the right show these two other kind of charge attack skills. So you really do have to mix and match to get the right combination and using them all up quite quickly can leave you to then just normal sword fighting and when you've got quite a few batches of enemies quite close together that can get a little bit tedious although it has the loot system it doesn't seem that useful although I could see it getting quite good later in the game the load parts of this game are a little bit strange it loads you directly into your last save and you can't seem to pick a kind of save point to ever go back to you can only choose between a couple of characters and obviously a character is set because of the story and you have to start the game again so if you want to start at different sections of the game you need to start different characters and stop them at those points Thanks for watching, let us know in the comments below what you think of Godfall in general and what you think of this comparison. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all things cloud gaming and we will see you next time. to react, Arn. I have a duty to stop him.